How do we position you with everything happening in the world? As soon as you find it, somebody yell it out. Page 43. How do we position you so you become the obvious choice? So you find your tribe and your tribe finds you. Are you guys up for that? Are you up for that? Now, for my elite clients, remember in February we were in San Diego? I went into this a little bit, and the most consistent feedback I got is, we need more. So I've got some different twists for all my elite clients and Team Plus clients, and for everybody else, I'm gonna give you the five most important positioning strategies, but I'm also gonna show you what the consumers are thinking, so you can then say, if this is what the consumers are thinking, and this is what I know I do, how do I package that so my tribe finds me? So can you give me the slides, guys? So let's go right here. Play a game with me. If positioning is one of the most powerful marketing strategies on the planet, you know, why choose me versus someone else? That's positioning. Can you guys yell out, loud the name of a soft drink so i heard a little coke maybe pepsi somebody yesterday said to me shasta <laughs> but everybody's got a flavor that they relate to yes or no okay how about this one name a water company i can't hear you right and again we're talking about water and how many different packaging opportunities and companies and brands, this one makes me smart, this one's more watery. You know what that sounds like, Robert? This is a good agent in Hollywood. This is a good agent in Hollywood. This one makes me hydrated. This one makes me more intelligent. How do we choose? How about a hotel brown? Yell it out loud. What's your favorite? Right? Marriott, Hilton, Four Seasons. How about an airline? Which airline do you like? I'm pissed that Virgin is kind of non-existent now in the US, right? Because they were amazing. Look over here on the sides because it might get lost behind there. Can you think of a real estate coach? Uh, that wasn't very loud, but I'll take it. But here's my real one, you ready? How about that one? Oh, the room got kind of silent. 5,500 people and I didn't hear me. Be honest right now. Yeah, thanks to the crickets. Be honest right now. Who has the biggest brand awareness as an agent in your town? Besides you. Think about it and tell your neighbor. Who has the biggest brand name awareness in your town? Who is it? Good to see you, my dear. Who is it? You. All right, come back to me. Shh. So I want you to take some photos or I want you to take some notes. Either way, remember all my slides will be inside of the app for you. Let's look at a mix-up of a few different companies that talk about consumer brands, or excuse me, consumers' response to real estate agents. So let's take a look. What do we know today? Four out of five people search for real estate on Google. Tell your buddy, how is your Google page and how many reviews do you have? How is your Google page or your Google business page and how many reviews do you have? Tell your buddy. Now, shh. Who can remember, for some of my longtime friends in the room, in the US market, around eight years ago, I went out on a national tour, and part of my conversation, Tom, was you need to over-index on Zillow reviews. And I had people get mad at me. You know, what if somebody writes something bad about me? My response was, maybe you should be better. Right? It's not the consumer's fault if they write a bad review. There's probably something you did. 
And, and today, watch this, raise your hands if you have more than 10 reviews on your Zillow page. Raise, raise your hands really high. Oh, look, everyone that's from the US. And now my friends in Canada, with them there as well, the same rule applies. So what we know is today, you still got four out of five people, and even if they do this, homes for sale in city, they might even type in Zillow or Truly or Realtor or Redfin or whatever they want, but does your Google profile, does your Google business page stand out, and do you have enough reviews there? And if the answer is no, I would argue you're missing the mark. Number two, 72% of consumers, now I added in the word settled, for the first agent they met. Is that an opportunity for us? What do you guys think? Because I believe, and you're gonna see the consumer data, that Tony, they truly settled for the first agent that they met. The next point is 68% of consumers don't trust real estate professionals. Now clearly, they haven't met you. What did we talk about all day yesterday? How many times did I say video? How many times? My team said, we think you were in the 800 range. Maybe because there's reverberation inside the room. So I say, video, 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 video. My point to you is, we need to scale trust. And the only way in my mind to scale trust is to get in front of that camera, put yourself out there, all the things we discussed yesterday and more. Now, I would like all women in the room to raise your hands. Okay, all of you, repeat after me. I promise to start doing videos. Start doing videos. Now, does anybody know why I'm lovingly calling out all my female clients? Because you are the ones that are like, is my hair right? Oh my God, did I say the wrong? And yet, men don't take this personally, you are the heart and soul of the real estate business. I'm serious. You not expressing you and sharing who you are, there's a reason why I showed you two videos yesterday. One where Becky Barrick, who is a rock star, flubbed a little bit and kept going. What was I sub subconsciously trying to show you? That you can make mistakes, it's okay. No one cares. And then I showed you Carrie like sitting in a room on her iPhone, like the lighting wasn't professional, it wasn't perfect, but she was sharing with people, here's the lessons I'm learning. She's scaling trust. Does that make sense? And you might argue, yeah, but there was only 778 views. How much time would it take to call 778 people and have that conversation? How many open houses would you have to do to share something 778 times to an individual? And when was the last time they hit the share button and shared it with their friends after meeting you at an open house? The scalability, Robin, that's the game. So look at the next one. 40% of consumers said they'd rather have a root canal than talk to a realtor. That's frightening. But look at this one. Consumers have a higher standard for Uber drivers than they do real estate agents. Because at least when I get in the Uber car, I know where I'm going and I can real time report something if it's wrong. Wouldn't it be nice if we can do that in a real estate transaction? Here's the big one. Please take a photo of this, lock this one in. Consumers expect their home buying and selling process to be painful, emotional, complex, and confusing at best. But think about it. Write down this question, please. Write down this question. What do you do with tremendous confidence once every decade? What do you do with tremendous confidence once a decade? Do you remember when I first said this in February at the Elite in San Diego and somebody yelled out, sex? I was like, ooh, sorry to hear that. But think about it. 
The average consumer is moving every 10 years. What do they do with tremendous confidence and certainty in their selection process once every 10 years? We have to do something about it. So, NAR tells us, by the way, 23% of consumers use the same agent, right, more than once, only 23% of the time. Now, many of us could argue that those people may have left the business. That could be the case. Or the combination of don't trust and root canal and trust an Uber driver more than the experience could have caused them to respond to another website, to respond to another offer, to someone that they met, she at a party, and they're like, I really like her style. So, is this an opportunity for us, yes or yes? Yes or yes? Guys, remember the graph yesterday where we said, here's how it's always been, 91-ish percent handled by agents, iBuyers now, disruptors, people going in after your commissions. The people that are running these companies, not only are they armed with a lot of capital, they also have very smart marketeers who understand consumer behavior. We need to tap into these slides and not just giggle at the root canal, but get to the root of why people feel this and understand their position, where they are making a decision once every 10 years to do something like buying or selling real estate. It's an enormous opportunity. So you remember I said to you, so what's our real challenge? Please find yourself on that aisle. It actually looks more like this. Or worse, this. How did you stand out, right? Well, my company has red, so does that bag of chips. Well, my company has a cool little logo. She's pretty cool looking. How do you stand out? Tell your buddy right now, be totally honest. What happens if you don't stand out? What happens? Tell your buddy. What happens if you don't stand out? The question is how do we solve this? Who's up for solving this? Say I. Are you sure? So I've shortened the list, made it a little more simple, and I don't want this to be, I'm talking to all my elite clients right now, my Team Plus peeps, because I've been in this conversation with you. We've been talking about this for a while. As the market continues to shift and more and more money goes after the billions of dollars in commissions, what we don't want, my friends, is to become commoditized. How did that work out for stockbrokers? They got commoditized. How did that work out for the people that were selling us our airline tickets or booking hotels? They got commoditized because they didn't do anything to stand out and bring significant value. And the three A's, you might want to write them down. You ready, guys? The three A's that are a threat to all of us. Do you know what they are? AI, automation, and Asia. AI, automation, and Asia. And I'm not dogging Asian countries in any way, shape, or form. It's called, we can do it for dramatically less cost so I can outsource to Asia and have my transactions done really fast at a low cost. AI, speeding up the process, and people go, oh, AI is kind of scary. Who has a phone in this room? Who has a phone? Have you ever asked Siri or gone on to Google and started to type in something in Google, and before you're halfway through your search query, it starts giving you answers? Guess what that is? That's AI. Everything is going to make it easier for customers to make decisions. How do you stand out? How do we solve this? Is this how we do it? <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones. Now, if it said, if you like Asian dudes with no hair on their chest, oh yeah. Andy, that could be you. And he's like, that is me. But I got a better one. How about this guy? I actually kind of appreciate that one. But arguably the best one is this one. 
I spend $1,200 a month on this billboard. Please buy a home for me. Now, you want to see the best one of all time? How about if you got this in the mail? You can't make this shit up. Yeah, some of you are like, whoa. Well, in fairness, we are going to talk about attracting your perfect customers. Some people are into that. Find your tribe. (laughs) All right, all right, all right. But then we went on Google, we just found this. I love this. We buy crack houses. I'm sorry, Sue, but Sue Stanford, the ghost realtor. My homes are 100% ghost and demon free. Patricia can see where no one else can. This guy's last name is Lamb, so he put his head on a lamb. I mean, I guess if you were selling homes like in the South Island of New Zealand, That would be a really good idea, right? You would stand out. So really, how do we position ourselves? How do we truly position ourselves? So after all that fun, I'm gonna go very heavy with you. You guys ready? As you've heard me say, and you're now all going to read two to three articles every day from the Harvard Business Review, right guys? Right guys? Yes? because you want to be informed, you want to stay ahead of the curve, you don't want to be caught off guard by what's going on in the world, it's certainly in business. There was a fantastic study from the Harvard Business Review on positioning, focusing on what matters to customers. What are the values that cause them to choose you over someone else? I would argue this is the most important assignment Remember yesterday when I said you're now running two businesses? Make a ton of money right now and start building for 2020, building for 2021. This is a major issue for us in the building for the future to stand out. So high level, here's what the article said. Consumers decide to buy based upon perceived value, buy or hire. There are 30 items of value no matter the product or the industry. In other words, it's not just pricing, for instance, that affects a consumer's decision, but it's emotions, logic, and psychology, which explains sell the benefits, not the features. Talk about the sizzle, talk about the emotion, make the connection, not I'm number one. Now, it's nice to say you're number one, right or wrong, guys, but what does that have to do for the customer? What does that really mean to me if I'm selling my first house? Are you too busy? Are you too successful? Are you gonna nurture me? Are you gonna walk me through the process? Or are you just have a really good machine that helps a lot of people? Human beings are weird. We perceive all kinds of things. I'm not dogging saying number one, but think about it. Here's here's basically the best thing that was inside this article. Bain and Company, right, extraordinary business, they basically created what they call the 30 elements of value. And these are how customers choose you. It's based on a connection to one of the 30 things. Now, I know that's probably hard to read because there's a lot on there, but you can see functional reasons why they choose you you've sold houses in my area, I see your signs everywhere, I keep watching you on video, you must be doing something right, versus emotional reasons. It rewards me, it's attractiveness, it's entertainment and fun. Look up here. Can real estate agents be selected based upon entertainment and fun? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Only if you're If you're entertaining and fun, if you're not, maybe that's not your bag. Wellness, therapeutic, then you move to life-changing. Motivation saves time, heirloom, provides hope. And then you got companies like Apple that impact social transcendence. I buy an iPhone. (gasps) Now here's the question. First of all, how many of those should you have? What should you strive for? And then, do you pick or does somebody else pick? Let's address both. 
The first thing you need to understand is according to the study, the more elements a company has, the higher their what's called an NPS, Net Promoter Score Rating. Net Promoter, all that means is how referable are they? The actual question is, on a scale from one to 10, how likely are you to refer me to people that you know? And if you're an eight, nine, or 10, you are highly referable, and they're telling the world. If you're anything less than that, they don't talk about you. Now, Apple does a pretty good job marketing. They have 11, the highest of all the companies that were analyzed. This is what I want you to get. Companies that scored high on four or more had recent revenue growth four times over someone that had one. So how many should we try and get to? Am I going over your head or are you guys with me on this? Am I going over your head or are you with me on this? This is going beyond should you make your phone calls and take advantage of your accent. This is how do I get more people to identify me as the solution and reach out to me? That sounds like a better option. What, what do you guys think? I mean, I love making phone calls and doing the work and right, but I also love my phone blowing up and emails coming in. Hi, we'd like to do more business with you and can we hire you? That's what I'm talking about. So I would argue, take a look at this. You should use SurveyMonkey or another anything that allows you to send an email to every person in your database, all of your past clients, all of your sphere, and say, would you please take a moment and just answer four basic questions for me? I'd like to get some feedback on the way I'm operating and how I'm doing what I'm doing. So they, you know, if you go like inside Survey Monkey Phil, it's the first question, how referable am I? You know, what is the likelihood of you referring me one to 10? What if a whole bunch come back, eight, nine, 10, eight, nine, 10, but you're also gonna see some ones, some fours, some sevens. The only numbers that really matter, like the referable people are eight, nine, and 10. But you should also be thinking about who said one. Who's in your database that said one? Who's in your database that skipped the question? Because that's also a one. Then I wanna ask, what did I do that my competitors didn't do? What did I do that my competitors didn't do? Well, Gino, you went out of your way to do this and this and this and this. You brought staging services. You, you negotiated the contract like a master. We thought the deal was gonna fall apart. You brought in your manager, Alan, and you saved the day. You, you went above and beyond the call of duty and you answered my phone calls at midnight. Right? They're sharing all this. First of all, you're gonna feel good about it, but then you're gonna ask, how did working with me make you feel? How did working with me make you feel? Remember the first slide when it says they're not buying, right, the features, they're buying the benefits, Chris, the emotion, the psychology, it's the why I choose you, right? I feel better in your presence. I know he's a rock star. I want that proximity. They're telling you those things. But then you ask, how did buying and selling with me affect your life. And you want to talk about real reviews and real things they're going to share about buying their first home, about the unfortunate tragedy of getting divorced and having to separate the family and how you help navigate that and how you made that transition easier during such a stressful time. They're telling you why you really matter. So tell your buddy right now, would you be willing to send your entire database those four questions in a survey and get the answers?